Welcome back. Tonight we're talking about viral online campaigns and business attractions to them. In particular, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. More than a million donors raising more than $94 million for ALS in one month. That's gripped the world of social media, but should business be paying attention to this kind of publicity making? To discuss uh, that issue, I'm joined by Stephen Dale, General Manager of Digimind, a firm that specializes in social media monitoring and analysis. Thanks for being with us. Good evening. So, your monitoring of of, uh, of the ALS bucket cha ice bucket challenge. What, what did you make of how this campaign was conducted and its impact? Uh, well, I think first of all, the impact was was absolutely huge. I mean, you probably at the start of it, you couldn't have expected it to uh, to grow as as quickly as it has done. And I think with the the number of Sources that have picked up this campaign. This was one of the, the biggest things that we noticed. It, it's not just social media sources. No. When you talk about social media monitoring, um, you're really talking about online buzz, and it's All not right, just. Let's, let's 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 take those two things separately, if we could. Then uh, the the impact and, and and the buzz. The numbers were huge, obviously, but that doesn't necessarily equate to the impact. You you brought some numbers in. Let's take a take a look at this slide uh, of um, the impact that it had sentiment about the ice bucket challenge now break down for me how you've analyzed this and, and what does it add up to well first of all when you're when you're running a campaign of course you would want the feedback to be to be positive and and with something like the ice bucket challenge you would have expected it, with it being for a charity you would have fully expected it to be a really positive campaign however i think from the from the two ladies speaking before it's it's quite clear that there's some some mixed views on it and and as such we've seen nearly a third of the results being negative. Now, if that was a, a normal commercial organisation, that would be something that you would really want to take into consideration if you were trying to run this particular type of campaign. And we talked in the first half about how a lot of businesses these days do talk about uh, going viral, about trying to create something that will generate such a vast amount of, uh, of eyeballs in one go. But as you say, if it's a business, I mean, you can't, you can't scoff at $94 million or whatever it raised, but if you are a business looking to go viral, if 30% of your responders are saying, you know, this, I don't like this at all, then can you consider that a success in the business world? It depends how you measure the success. I mean, if you measure it on the, the financial gain, um, then that's one thing. But also, I think what you have to take into consideration with these type of viral campaigns is that they're not necessarily long-term. You might get short-term gain in, in a financial sense, but if you're looking at long-term gain, I'm, I'm not so sure that the, uh, uh, the, the perhaps the brand loyalty would... It, it's not going to develop that, that kind of uh, feeling from the customers. So, to, to a large extent... I mean, what would you say to a client who wants to monitor their online exposure and the amount of coverage and, uh, and stuff they're getting from their online campaigns? I mean, would you say to them, look, be careful about this whole virality idea because it may go somewhere that you don't want? Well, I wouldn't necessarily... I'd, I'd, say, care, I'd say be careful in terms of um, uh, the, the responses that you could get. In terms of the, the sources that you would... Uh, look to target. What I would suggest is that when you're running these sorts of campaigns, of course, you want them to be picked up on, on things like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all of the other social media sources. But one of the things that we tend to focus on is looking at the potential audience, so the impact that this yeah. information can have. And one of the things we show here is that by far the largest source that had the biggest impact for this campaign was the news sources. So whilst there, there probably weren't as many uh, posts or, or, or articles or, or reviews or um, uh, interviews being had on the news pages um, or videos being made, certainly the impact, the, the number of people that would have seen uh, the well, seen these uh, interviews would have been coming from the uh, coming from the press. Which which is quite interesting in in a context in which all we're talking about is online buzz and virality and the new media and digital uh, stuff. Actually, if it hadn't have been for the old media, this would never have got quite the traction that it had. No, and I think in the uh, at the start of the, uh, the when the campaign first started, and I know there was some debate as to how it first came about, but I think it was a, a baseball player in the uh, the US who actually had had ALS, and uh, he he posted his video. It then got picked up, I think, by one of the the news stations, and then it started to to, to steamroll from there. Have you found um, in your monitoring that, that there is a, a lifespan or a, a curve to 
uh, the online take up and uh, the online impact of campaigns. I I is it better to be viral fast and then die quickly or have a long, slow burn? Again, I think it depends on what you're trying to get out of the campaign. Um, I think you've seen in the past with, with campaigns like the uh, Harlem Shake, for example, they're, they're generally very quick, or, or the neck nominations, which was very similar to the Ice Bucket Challenge in the fact that you challenge your friends and they have 24 hours to respond. Um, they, these campaigns, or, or these viral um, campaigns, as you might call them, they, they come and go very, very quickly. They might be around for a few months and then, and then they die off. So... Um, like I say, it depends on, on what you're trying to gain out of the campaign. If you're after a quick um, increase in the, in the profits or if you're, you're after trying to develop your brand name for a, a longer period of time. So what is it, that, in your experience, when businesses ask you to monitor, what is it that they are looking for? I mean, what, 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 uh, how do businesses uh, look at this whole situation? How do they try and factor it into the, the way they, they operate? Well, for what we're doing, they're, they're generally looking for the, for the sentiment, the positive or the negative things. They want to understand what people are saying about that ca campaign and understand what they should do uh, in the future and, and maybe what they should change uh, in the here and now. And what are, what, are the, what are the most effective ways you've seen of that being done? Well, I mean, maybe we can, uh, we can focus on perhaps just the ALS, uh, yeah. the Ice Bucket Challenge, and, and maybe look at the, the positives and the negatives. I mean, one of the, one of the positive things that you would see out of this, uh, this campaign at the moment is, of course, that they increased their, their, their income. I think it went up from 2.5 million to, mm -hmm. to, to 94 million uh, over, the, uh, over the same period uh, last year. So that's a positive. Um, and of sure course, they don't increased, expect that to repeat. No, exactly, and and you wouldn't expect most campaigns. You wouldn't expect it to have uh, that sort of impact. Mm. Similarly, they've also got mass exposure from this uh, campaign, which again you probably wouldn't expect uh, that that level of exposure. Even though I know the statistics say, well, half of the people didn't really know what they were they were campaigning for or doing the video for. Still, it has a, a big. It, it still has a big impact. Um, and and if half of those people have uh, become aware of. Uh, ALS, as, as I have been, um, and educated on it, then that can only be a good thing. I think the negatives come when you, even for the brand, some of the actions they take, if you look at um, uh, the, the charity themselves, now almost getting carried away talking about trying to uh, trademark the, uh, the ice bucket challenge. Is that a, a good or a bad thing? Well, t tell me. I mean, there's the whole idea of trademarking something like that. Seems a bit, seems a bit absurd. Well, right, especially for a charity as well, because you would expect um, uh, a charity to, to be charitable as well to, to other organisations, although I know they compete. Um, but by the very nature of it, it seems a little bit absurd to, uh, to try to stop other charities um, uh, also benefiting from what has been quite a profitable campaign. Indeed. Stephen, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Stephen Dale of Digimon.